Can David Moyes actually give the youngsters an opportunity tonight when we play Lincoln City? That's what we're here to discuss. Hopefully you've seen the video earlier today over the forum channel, which is us discussing about winning the Carabao Cup. Why we want to win the Carabao Cup. But anyway, this one's all about the youngsters. And I have to admit, Gonzo, in years gone by, I've been critical of whether it be David Moyes, whether it be Pellegrini, Slava Bilic, whoever the manager is. I wanted to see a pathway into the first team for the, the, the academy. And I don't think it's always been there. But I have to admit, this time, when we were doing the preview, now look at the squad we've got. And I do actually feel a little bit sorry for Moyes, because I do feel he's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. Because we, we've we got arguably our most talented group of youngsters in years yep. at West Ham. We've got that there. So we need something. But at the same time, we've also arguably, in my opinion, in terms of strength and depth, we've got the most talented squad We've had in a long, mm. long time at West Ham. Not necessarily starting 11 or the 13 players or whatever, but in regards to person number 17 in this squad, it's, it's arguably an international footballer. So I think Moyes has got a bit of a dilemma here where he's got the be best and strongest squad he's got at senior level, but he's also got the best and strongest squad at youngsters as well. And I just feel like it's a difficult job for him to integrate them into the senior squad. However, tonight's game, I don't know if he's going to get a better opportunity. No, I, I would agree. I mean, David Moyes is, is a manager in a funny position, really, because you look at our, our league position. Uh, we won the first game in Europe. We won a trophy last year. In, in, in terms of job security, he has it. But the contractual situation suggests otherwise. So I think if I were Mark Noble or Mark Phillips... Or anyone else called Mark. I think I'd probably be looking at it and I'd probably be thinking, OK, well, maybe not, not an awful lot's going to happen this season, but maybe I'll be saying to those youngsters, we don't know what's going to happen next season, but you are going to feature them. Now, Moyes has got a, a little bit of a problem, which is the club have made it clear by leaking that Connor Coventry and Ben Johnson are not going to stick around. And I, I don't have massive amounts of complaints about West Ham at the moment, but there are times when I look at that plaque that thing on the carpet painted on the carpet it was at upton park as well by the way different will be a different one that says the academy of football and i sort of you know okay you know yeah i love it there but i'd like to see it and i think if you're going to announce yourself as that which we do so we're happy to wear the badge and it's a badge of honor we are the academy of football I think when you start displaying that to other clubs, which you're doing, it's there. They, they will literally every player that plays West Ham this season will walk across a badge that says, welcome to the Academy of Football. Well, it's quite a statement. And um, and I, I think you, you have to cer certainly live up to it. Now, at the moment, we absolutely have, you know, um, Declan Rice has just gone. Uh, we got, you know, but now's the transition period. And David Moyes has got, a situation where he cannot afford... We, we spent a lot of money this summer. We spent a lot of money last summer. But we're still looking at it and thinking, well, maybe a right back, maybe a left back, maybe a left winger and certainly a striker. And everyone might have their own little var variations of that. We can't keep buying these players. At some point, some of them have got to come from the academy. And that's not saying anything particularly revolutionary. Everyone does. Man City do it. Barcelona do it. And by Munich do it. Why so why wouldn't why wouldn't West Ham? And if he's gonna do that, he's also got his quota that he's got to fill, then he really needs to start picking now and deciding now if he's gonna stay on, and we don't know. If he's gonna stay on, who out of this little crop of youngsters here am I gonna take with me that are gonna be sat on my bench next season? And that really is a question that he needs to answer against Lincoln. Well, that's part of the problem, Phil, because I think a manager with less than a season to go on his contract, I actually am on the side of the fence, which is, well, why should he bother? Why should David Moyes blood youngsters against Lincoln tonight? Why should he care about Callum Marshall's future? Why should he give George Earthy minutes against the Lincoln City? Why should he choose all his scars over Aaron Creswell, who has been at the club the whole time Moyes has been here? And yes, the, U the Europa League semi-final, Creswell's let Moyes down, but you'd imagine... Creswell has David Moyes' trust. The longevity is there. So why should Moyes pick this youngster over adding Creswell, a season pro, 
well, we know as West Ham fans why we want to see that happen because we think Skiles might make it at West Ham. We want to see him given an opportunity, give him evidence, reasons to stay at West Ham because we've had some youngsters leave the club recently to go to the likes of Manchester City. They've said, I'm not going to sign a contract with West Ham, actually. I'm going to go to Man City. You know, Yamal Baptiste, the latest one. Now, it, things didn't go right with him in West Ham. He's spoken publicly about it. But another youngster has said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm off. Uh, he's, he's gone to a bigger club than what West Ham is. So we, there is evidence, that only two or three, but we've struggled to hold on to the players that we want to retain. And I think the the younger players at the club right now, who we, don't know, we do not know the names of, might be looking at the current crop of the 18, 21-year-olds, thinking, well, they're not going to get into that senior team. I ain't going to commit my future to West Ham. I'm, I'll sign my scholarship, but then when that professional contract lands on the table, I might say, hang on a minute, I need to be careful here because... Like you said, the current two academy players, Ben Johnson and Conor Conch, have both been told, get, go, go find a new club at the end of the season. You, you don't have a future at West Ham anymore. Um, whether that's the right or wrong decision, we'll wait and see. I think I, you know, I understand why the club's done it. But in terms of the academy, it's not a great look. And for the younger players at the club, I don't think it's a great look either. But why should boys blood them? And I think this is the problem when you have a manager with less than a year to go in his contract, he's not got that security. So, so why should he? So I actually sort of side with Moyes a little bit. However, I will play my own devil's advocate here. Moyes could have a four year contract. And my confidence in Moyes playing those youngsters tonight probably wouldn't go up much. You might go up by a smidgen. I think I might see Mubama. I mean, Mubama might get 10 minutes, but in terms of seeing more of that, I'm not so sure. And I think the club need to decide whether it's a problem or not. Are they OK with why he's not playing the youngsters? Or is it an issue and that we need them through? And this is where I think I wonder how Mark Noble's support for the manager wavers a little bit here because his job is to get players into the first team. But the manager's blocking it. Then Noble's got to speak up. Well, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right in what you say. But what, what I would say in, in any employment situation, actually. So if I run a shop or a warehouse or something like that. And I've got a line manager. And I've got a manager whose job it is to ensure that the shop or, or that the warehouse is, is fully stocked. And if he gives me notice and says he's leaving, what I don't expect him to do in the three months before he leaves is just to basically not reorder any stuff. So as when he walks out of there, the place just goes to pot. David Moyes has got a duty to basically look and it this this is for the club to enforce this there's a there's a reason that there are quotas in place the rules the rules of football are telling not just david moyes but everybody you're going to need some youngsters in your squad now they're, 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 i think they're actually quite flexible so actually you can sign a lot of players you can have overseas players you can have have them from anywhere but it's going to have to be a a section of your squad that not only is homegrown that comes from your academy and they're rules that have been put in place by everyone in football be it fifa uefa the fa everyone has put these in place because because it's the right thing to do and it sort of goes hand in hand with a financial fair play which is the financial fair play is meant you to live within your means well one of the ways to do that is to promote your academy so actually it's part of his job to ensure that that his squad has has those component parts if what he's going to say, and I'm not saying he's saying this, but if his attitude is, well, do you know what? Next year is none of my business anyway. It's just the same as the guy that works in the shop and has sold anything but hasn't ordered anything in. So when he leaves, the shop is empty. And the regional manager says, well, what's, what's going on? The shop is empty. You've been negligent. This, this is your negligence. So I do feel there has to be a conversation between the club and David Moyes, which is in, in contradiction to what the club's policy is, which is offered Moyes a contract at the end of the season. So they're actually going to have to have a really frank conversation with him, which might will go along the lines of, look, Moyes, you, you, we're finishing the top half and we get to knock out stage in Europe again. We're going to offer you a new deal. With that in mind, we really need you now. We, we can't afford to keep buying £30 million players for every position. We're right on the edge with financial fair play. The Declan Rice deal did us a massive favour. We, I, we, 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 need, we, need, we need three youngsters in your 25-man squad, and that's part of your job, and that's what we need you to do. I think, I think your analogy is not the best one in regards to the guy who doesn't stop the warehouse, because David Moyes will still be fulfilling his job. He's not, not doing his job. It's just not part of his job to bring the youngsters through, as we understand it. But he's making it more I mean. difficult for the next man, is what I'm saying. Yeah, he, um, 
Well, I guess he, he, you could say he is. You could say he's not. It depends if the next man wants to bring youngsters through or not. Well, yeah, yeah, he has club. to because he won't have Ben Johnson or Connor Coventry. So they they next year, there's going to have to be some homegrown players in there. So where are they going to come from? So we they need to be given them. a little bit of time to see. Unless we're in European football. But some of them have got to come from West Ham Academy. No, we're not in European football. No, it's true. So we're not in European football. It only has to be eight homegrown players in general. So that's why Ward Price counts, Antonio counts. Um, if we signed Ian Matson, he counts straight away because he's mm. homegrown. And he goes, there you go, there you're ticking your boxes. We retain Anang. There's there's one of them straight away. But if we're in European football, then certainly four players have to be club trained. Anang's one of them. We don't have another three at present. And this is where the club are going to have to get a little bit technical and I wouldn't be surprised if they were to go back on their decision in regards to maybe Ben, maybe not Conor sure. Comptia, but Ben Johnson, I wouldn't be surprised if we were to qualify for European football club thing, hang on a minute, we, we're we missing players here, we can only have Ben Johnson, unless they're going to go and sign Josh Cullen um, in order to oh, <laughs> go, yeah, there we go, hey, hey. I like he, it. Ticks, yeah. he ticks that box, um, have a look, is there anyone else that We've trained that is actually adequate for the first team that can go and sign kind of thing, um, which is would be a ridiculously poor policy. But this is where I remember listening to Thomas Frank. I remember said to you ages ago about how he gets he gets sort of judged on KPIs. Essentially, it's not where you finish in the league. It's not really judged on that. He's not necessarily judged on results. It's judged on all the other stuff, which is how many set pieces, how many goals by set pieces do you score, etc. That's what he gets targeted. And I do wonder, maybe the club need to bring in something like that to have that gateway into the first team. Because this is this season and last, this is the downfall of playing European football. While it may give opportunities for the youngsters, it also forces you to have a larger squad, a stronger squad. And then they're in the way of the youngsters getting into the first team. So if we weren't to have European football next season, I would argue we don't need five senior centre-backs, which is what we've got at the minute. Yeah, Obana, yeah. Mavapanos, Kedder. We don't need that much. If we're we don't have European football next season, we need four maximum, and that's only because Kurt Zuma is injury prone. The fifth player would then be your youngster if called upon. You wouldn't need Connor Coventry in this squad because you'd have no box ticking to do. Arguably, you wouldn't need Ben Johnson. Say, well, who's going to play? Well, move Kedder over. We'll bring in Batchroom. We'll play Batchroom at right back if we have to. Um, but I think at the minute, I think the European squad is, like I said, it is like slightly double edge because on one hand it gives opportunities to bring the youngsters in for the European nights but also it forces you to have a bigger squad which stops youngsters getting into the squad on those European nights and I think tonight I think we're going to see a reminder of that because let's do a prediction game then do you think Moyes will start any of the youngsters and I'm not including Connor Coventry in this I consider him a senior player now no how many not do you even, think will be on the bench Obama. how many do you think will be on the bench three and I might even include an Ang in that. How old is he? Yeah. I mean, he might be might be thirty now. Um, <laughs> he's twenty. He's in his yeah, early twenty. Yeah, a little but... whipper snapper. Um, yeah. Look, I mean, to be fair, you know, you want to go into detail on on, on the players. I mean, that, that's a that's a generalised conversation we've yeah. just had. I'll give you a reason why. Well, I'll, I'll give you a reason why he should play Callum Marshall and why Callum Marshall should leave. Um, he should play Callum Marshall because he's a better finisher than any of the players that he would potentially use. He, he's the closest thing I've seen to Robbie Fowler since Robbie Fowler, funny enough, um, which is quite a good thing, really. Um, uh, he should leave because he's not a David Moyes type player. If David Moyes gets a contract, Callum Marshall's better off leaving. Um, I think Kadua would have a chance. I think Orford, as you mentioned, would have a chance. And I think Mubama should have a chance. Um, uh, why should why should he bring in? Um, but there are other reasons. I think he should bring in Chester's because I think if from what I've seen, and that's a, he's really adapted to that right wing back position. He may well find. I mean, you may well find after 10, 15 games, you actually have someone who's who's operating on a very very good level, which would be a reason to do that. Um, I, I, there's, there's been times I've looked, actually, particularly in Kadua, I've looked at stuff on the wing and I thought, well, he can do that better. And um, and he's not, without being funny, he's not like someone that needs to fill out or and neither's Mubama. You know, they're, grow, they're grown men. You know, there's, there's no, you know, they're, they're rough and tough and you've only got to look at what these, these kids, you know, and I use that in inverted commas, these kids did to Bristol Rovers men. Um, 
and they they they, they were they were fit and there was parts where they were fitter and stronger than them so that these are highly trained athletes you know not not kids actually um and, and i just think there there are actually proper footballing reasons to either include or exclude some of these players irrespective of their ages when i look at them and i don't i don't wish to dig out four nails because i will make every excuse for four nails you want to have a conversation about why four nails isn't playing well for west ham i'll give you lots i'll give him all the all the mitigation i'll blame everyone else and i won't even particularly blame four nails however once we've given him all the excuses why he's playing crap he's still playing crap and for that reason um if you're going to go and play him in the number 10 i suspect george earthy will will do a better job than Pablo Fornells at number ten, and I say that for somebody that would drop that would drop him back into midfield for the Lincoln game and have him almost as a number eight, if you know what I mean. So um, yeah, I um, mean, there are lots of different reasons for it. Really, it's a, a very very interesting conversation. Yeah, it, it concerns me a little bit because, like, I'm never. I know people. I know I can already imagine what the comments are going to say. Oh, we get this all the time. How many youngsters leave West Ham and go on? But I don't. I don't recall. There's not been loads of times I've sat here saying, "Oh, get that youngster into the team." I don't say it very often. I remember plenty of like Tony Martinez. I remember not being that bothered by him looking at him in front of the 23s. Was well, thinking, I'm not sure. I mean, I got that one wrong. He's gone off and played Champions League football. But even him, I was I was reluctant to say, "Yeah, get him in the first team." Elise was one of them at quite at times, but not for Premier League games per se. But these kind of games, like let's get Equa in the team and have a look at him. But these youngsters are a special crop of players at the minute yeah. you know what what more can they possibly do they're doing everything they can do are under 18s and now are under 21s level they've made the step up this season and they're doing at that level now well what else can they do in order to get an opportunity in the first year? there's not much else the only thing you could argue is go out on loan but traditionally we've been we're crap at that we're not very good at loaning players out to the right club where oh, they go oh, get minutes and they come back closer to the first team like i said Let's go back to the the last player to be an established first team squad member. Of West Ham, Ben Johnson, no loan. The one before that, Declan Rice, no loan. There's, there's, is that a coincidence? Maybe, maybe it's not. But the the ones that do go out on loan, like Josh Cullen, tend to just keep going out on loan until it gets to the yeah, point yeah. where we just have to let him go, kind of thing. And we're at that point with Connor Coventry. Is he good enough for West Ham? Probably not. But. As he had the fair crack, I don't think so. I don't think West Ham have done that well by him by finding the right loans for him. He's always just gone out and had these bit loans, if you like. You no, know, he went on loan to Lincoln. I spoke to um, Gary from the Stacey West blog because he went there and he was a bit like, oh, he didn't really feature much. And COVID hit, so it interrupted his loan spell. But it was a bit, even he was a bit like, oh, he wasn't that good. I mean, that was a commentary going that you should be the best player in that team essentially if you're loading out a player from a Premier League Academy that might make it your team they should waltz into League One and two size and look good. Um so I'm just a bit concerned that we're maybe gonna lose one or two of these players yeah. and they're gonna prove us wrong. Of course. And and, and that's happened before Gio. Uh, that's what I would say is yeah look look we've been you know what doing forums, which obviously then we went on, became Hammers Chat. Hey, we're me. 10 years old next year. There you go. Since 2007, though, we've been on forums doing this stuff. And, and I have, I have um, a lot of the people that ask that question, that question does come up every single time and has done for as long as I can remember. Well, hold on, what, what players gone on and done anything when they've left West Ham? Well, of course, by the very nature, the person asking the question doesn't know the answer. Otherwise, they wouldn't be asking the question. But actually, there's been lots. There's a lot from the moment Tony Adams walked out of our academy, or, or you know, but everyone's looking for a Tony Adams or a John Terry that have left our academy and gone on. You don't have to be a world class star. Actually, there's there's been times when people like Liam Britton have have looked, at, you know, and we've let him go. And actually, you've actually he he was a really good Premier League performer. There's times when Junior Stanislas, for instance, well, he would have been really good in our squad. How did he go? What about Liam Ridgewell? He would have been really good. And watch, remember watching at Man United, Kieran Richardson coming for everything. But you know, that actually was quite a loss. Did he go on and be a world class star? No, he didn't. But these are players who who would have done really well for West Ham, and there are a number of them. And you say about Josh Cullen, actually, at the moment, you you made a joke about signing him back. Well, you know what? He, he wouldn't he wouldn't have been a bad one to have around, actually. You know, particularly if you can't well, afford to buy everyone else. So there there are examples there, and just because somebody is not a world star doesn't mean that you know that you wouldn't they wouldn't be some use to you as a decent squad player. You know, I I always think it's too 
straightforward to say, well, what have they done? Well, hang on a minute. That's because they went to League One and got League One training. What happens if they remained at a Premier League club with Premier League training? Surely their their future would be completely different. Um, you know, I always look at Harry Kane, went out on loan numerous times, did yeah. nothing, got an opportunity at Spurs in the in the Europa League, bang, scored. Go, all right, let's give him the let's give him a go in the first team in the rest of the street. Crazy, isn't it? But That's actually, crazy it's, not, it's not always the player that you let go and missed out on. What about the player you actually retained in Declan Rice? What about the one academy player you kept? Yeah. And you gave a chance to, that you developed, turned into a £100 million world-class midfielder. What about that? What happens if we've got Mubama? I'm not saying he could go on to be that. But what happens if we gave Mubama the same chance that we gave Declan Rice, where yeah. we put him in, let him make a mistake, we'll keep him at the club, and put him, take him out of the team, put him in again. Let me make more mistakes, put him in again, just keep on supporting him, keep on giving him the development that Declan Rice had because you just never know what you're going to get. So instead of focusing on the players that left and achieved nothing, maybe we should actually focus on the players that stayed and went on to achieve something because that is where Declan Rice and Junior Stanislas, they were at the same point years ago. They were at the same point, which is West Ham had to make a decision on their on their futures with mm. one we decide to let go the one we decide to retain well Mubama might be at that place right now where what we do is crucial to how well Mubama goes sure. on and I'd rather he does it at West Ham I'd rather he gets a chance at West Ham because I'd rather try 100 youngsters and get 99 wrong in order to get the one right than let 100 leave and watch that one guy do really well somewhere else I'd rather, I'd hate to see Mubama go somewhere and turn into a top Premier League striker worth 100 million because we didn't give an opportunity and it, Moyes is not going to get many chances to play these youngsters with zero consequences of course there is a consequence tonight we've got the Carabao Cup but I don't think we will and if no. we do I don't think it's because you play Mubama it's because the other 10 haven't done their job as well um, opportunities to play youngsters are few and far between I have sympathy with Moyes on that how do you leave senior players out to give them a chance well the Carabao Cup I think that's the one competition you can probably get away with it without having to explain to Lucas Paqueta why he's not in the match day squad. I think Paqueta will know why he's not in the match day squad. Doesn't mean he's dropped. Just means he's we're not taking that competition serious enough for Paqueta. So uh, there you go. Well, yeah, to just one final thing actually yes, was something we, we've had um we've had Tony Carr um on the Patreon podcast. We've had we had Harry. Uh, f- funny enough, I'll tell you what was what was funny was when we had them both on. They both told the same story, but from different sides. So there's 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 this story of, and it was um, it was is Harry needing a player. Harry needed a player, and he shouted over to Tony Carr, "Send us over a player." And um, and basically the, the 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 point was that because we didn't have split training grounds, which we do now. The under twenty ones were training over there. That they were there. So somebody get you, know, you. You need a right back. You need a left back. Whatever it is, chuck one over here. And and I heard that story. But all our patrons did from both sides. And there were two months separating the two interviews. It was really really interesting. And they both said exactly the same thing: having the teams training together, even if you keep in the dressing room separate and doing all that, them have, having them on the same field, stretch of grass or whatever, is so useful. Because you can't help but have a look. And um, and funny enough, it's something that, that Harry said off camera as well, which was you, you can't help yourself. If you're into football, you're into football. You can't you can't walk the dog in the park without stopping and have a little look. Have a little look at that game. Do you know what I mean? And anyone that likes football knows what it is. You, you just were in the park and you watch, you watch a game of football and you spot that talented player and you think this is great. And, and he said, as a manager, you can't help yourself. Even like if, if your players are running around the doing like, like running around the cones and doing the sprints, yet the youth team's over there and they're playing like a little five-a-side game. You can't help. You, you don't, you, you're, not watching, you're not watching the sh- shuttle runs and the rest of it. Your your attention goes towards the game over there, the actual proper game of football. And you might look, oh, he's good. Now look at him. Well, that's interesting. We would deny ourselves that. And, and I don't think I don't think that helps. So my, David Moyes' exposure to these young players is not as great, I would suggest, as most managers. Yeah, Glenn Johnson. There you go, he's one of them. Um, yeah, Glenn was Harry, Harry didn't bring him through, though. No, no. Um, they, they, they said to, yeah, they said to good Glenn, uh, Tony Carr, have you got right back? I said, well, yeah. Glenn Johnson, That's he's right. not going to make it. Is it. And they said, yeah, but we need a right back. I said, yeah, but he's not good enough. They said, well, I'll just give us some anyway. And yeah. then they went, he, went, he went on to win everything with Chelsea. So 
up until he played in the first team for West Ham, Tony Carr and the coach at West Ham didn't think he was good enough for West Ham. And look look at what he went on to achieve, yeah. all because he got a chance. Um, yeah. So you just never know. Chuck him in the deep end, sink or swim. Anyway, we're going to leave it there. Hopefully you're looking forward to the game. Uh, you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do drop a like on it. Get involved in the comment section. We're interested to hear your thoughts on this topic. Always one that uh, sparks a debate, if you like. But please be nice to each other. Please subscribe to YouTube. Chat. And if you haven't already checked out Mangan Gonzo's video from earlier today about winning the Carabao Cup, it'll be on your screen in about three seconds. We'll see you soon.